Today we'll look at the custom pixel art 3D graphics engine that I've been coding for Pixel Art Academy for the last one year. Hello everyone, my name is Matejan, also known as Retro, and uh, welcome to my Pixel Art Academy 101 YouTube show where I explain everything about Pixel Art Academy, my video game that I'm making. Today we have a very special episode uh, because A, it's been almost a year since the last video and I have been working on a lot of things that I have to show you and B, it is the four year anniversary of the launch of the project on Kickstarter and if you didn't have alpha access yet but you bought the game and you wanted to play it, I have some very good news for you at the end of this. Uh, but let's first dive in. So if you're new here and you have never heard of Pixel Art Academy or if you've backed this four years ago and you're going on what the hell was this game all about again, Pixel Art Academy is an adventure game where you become an art student and you create your own character so it's also a little bit of an RPG and the point is all of the skills that you gain in the game that your character is learning to draw, you're actually learning them for yourself in real life so you're actually learning how to draw. I came up with the idea four years ago as I was going to graduate school to get a master's degree in education and so I wanted to combine my love for pixel art and video games and teaching how to draw and so eventually I came up with the idea oh my god I need to create a video game where you're learning pixel art. So I put up the idea on Kickstarter, I set up a really small goal because I knew that I was gonna do this anyway in grad school and then it kind of blew up and a lot of people thought it was a good idea and so now it's uh, a bit scary because there's 2600 people waiting for me to create this and it's been four years so I, I understand understand you guys where is this game I want it I want it yesterday I want it two years ago but yeah I'm working on it full time all the time uh, and yeah I'm excited to show you uh, what I've been building for the last one year I want Pixel Art Academy to have the art style of the 90s point-and-click adventure games my favorite Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis it's a big influence back in the 90s even though the scenes were like real 3D places with perspective and everything everything was actually just a 2D image and so they had to create things like walkable areas where they have to set up how much a character needs to scale so that it looks like as it's walking it goes into the distance or you have to have this kind of walk behind area so that person can walk behind a crate or through the doors uh, all of the walk, all the scaling, all of those are hacks and I really wanted to, for my graphics engine, to get rid of all of that and the way to do that is to actually use 3D. <laughs> I've seen drunk old ladies who were able to hold on tighter than that. <laughs> In 3D you don't have any of these problems. The characters automatically scale as they go backwards because you have this 3D information, they will also come behind other objects. When you move the camera, everything moves properly, you have proper perspective. You can easily do dynamic shading to have the lighting situation change, characters drawing shadows properly. And there's another reason why it's important for me to go the 3D way is that there are going to be lessons in Pixel Art Academy that talk about shading and perspective and I want the graphics engine itself to be able to demonstrate those concepts. Okay, so I know I want to do 3D but I still want to have this 2D pixel art low res look. Now I could just take some software like Blender but it's just not really there to make to be able to actually have all the control over the pixels, at least not very easily, that I would know. So I decided to create a custom tool just for making uh, these kind of illustrations for Pixel Art Academy. I call my software 3D Paint because you draw pixel art just like you normally would and then it creates the 3D geometry automatically. So you get all of the things I talked about, you get the scaling, you get the sorting, you get dynamic shadows and everything all automatically. The only thing that you need to do is when you are drawing things instead of shading by choosing different shades in the palette, 
you're actually using this shading sphere. And what the shading sphere does is it records the normals of surfaces so basically where they are pointed towards and then I can look at the drawing the 2d pixel art drawing that I've done and see where the edges between the different clusters between the surfaces are and using the relationship between the clusters I can calculate where in the space these things need to be positioned and yeah you actually get a 3d model out of it now oftentimes it feels quite magical when you use it and it just does things automatically. Of course, it has its own problems. It's a very much prototype tool. Uh, for example, when you're drawing little small surfaces like table legs and window frames, because the, they're only one pixel wide, it doesn't really have all the inf necessary information of what's going on, so I had to create tools like extrusion of clusters. I have texture support so that I don't have to actually manually paint every single tile brick. Then I need to support translucent materials and this gets especially tricky if you want to also do translucent shadows. There's a lot of stuff left to do, like I want to have reflections, maybe gradients for the sky. I need to create an editor for lighting, but I'm very, very excited about this software. I'm do using it as I'm developing it. I'm creating these kind of test drawings that I can also play around with. And hopefully as it gets more stable in the future, I really want to share it with you guys, put it up on the website for patrons on Patreon to test it out and play with it. Okay, so that is one piece of the puzzle. And then the next one is characters. Here again, I wanna go with the art style of Indiana Jones, it's kind of 40, 50 pixel tall characters, quite realistic. However, because I want you to be able to create your own characters, I also want the characters to be fully customizable. To do this, I came up with a modular system of body parts that you put together and clothing. They're all like kind of little Lego pieces that you put together and there's templates for bigger pieces as they fit together. If we look at Indiana Jones again, you will see that it has a four directional system for movement, up, down, left and right. And then for the idle animations, it's in this kind of a three quarter view. So I decided I'm gonna do a fully eight directional system for Pixel Art Academy. Now what this means is that I have to draw all of the sprites from eight directions or from five directions if they're symmetrical. And that's just the body parts. Then for clothing parts, if I was supposed to do all of the t-shirts to match all the different body part combinations, I'd just go nuts. So what I've done instead is on the body parts, you have these little markers, I call them landmarks. We say, where is the person's nipples? <laughs> and the eyes and the different parts of the body. And then when I'm drawing the clothes, I again say, okay, so these parts of the clothes have to appear to match these little landmarks. And then the clothing gets automatically fitted onto the body. And I have this testing matrix of different body parts where I can see all the clothes, how they fit. And it's not pixel perfect, at least not for every body part, but again, it works and you can create a lot of different stuff. And so hopefully you guys will like creating your characters and you will have this diversity. Both of these tools have taken quite a lot of time because I'm just a solo game developer. I work on the game full time, all the time, every day. Uh, but yeah, it's just a lot of content, a lot of work to draw everything, to program everything, to test everything, to then do all of the gameplay for this feature itself where you get to meet all of your classmates which is what I'm gonna talk about in the next video when it's done. Speaking of which, yeah, if you so far have not had a chance to play Pixel Art Academy because you did not have alpha access, well, good news, when I release the next alpha update, the alpha will become an open alpha, which means all of you guys will be able to try if you've been a Kickstarter backer, if you've pre-ordered the game, if you're a Patreon supporter at $3, everyone will be able to play the current version. Now keep in mind, it is still just an alpha version. The storyline is about 80% done. There are no illustrations except for the gallery location that I showed up. And the servers might be crashing, especially if all 1000 of you decide to start playing at the same time. Hopefully that won't happen. And yeah, you're very welcome to come 
test it out uh, or continue waiting for the release like you have been very patiently so far which I want to really really thank you so much this has been really a game that's been kickstarted literally because there was just an idea to start and one person to make it and I'm very happy that you guys decided to give me a chance and I've been working on it every day anyway if you want to follow development more closely, if you're interested in this stuff, I do have a development blog that I post on Patreon and you don't even have to pledge anything there, it's all of my updates are open, so just go on the page, click follow if you want to get more granular updates, maybe once a week, sometimes more. And otherwise, yeah, I'll see you in the next video that's gonna have what's going on in this mixer study group meeting your classmates that's gonna be next time thank you so much for listening watching following all the likes comments thank you so much goodbye i'll see you next time